The Nest Wi-Fi system can be one of the best reliable Wi-Fi systems in your home. Now, today I have a router and Wi-Fi point. So this is two separate devices. Now, the router has some features about it. It's really smooth. There's no speaker on the bottom, so it's smooth all the way around. Then you have an outgoing internet connection and you have your network connection to the rest of the home. You also have a reset button. Now when we look at the other device, this is called the Wi-Fi point. And this is a secondary point. It has a speaker on the bottom. That's what all those holes are. And it has a microphone which actually gives you the Google Assistant. So this acts just like another Google Home or a Google Home Mini. You can see the reset button as well. Now, you do get a Let's Get Started card in this pack and a couple of AC adapters. Make sure you're using the ones you get in the box. Don't try to replace those. You also get an Ethernet cable which will connect you to the outside world. The biggest question you're likely to have in this whole process is, can I replace my router? and should I replace my router? And the nice thing about Nest Wi-Fi is that it can work in both situations. So what you're seeing here is my router from my internet service provider. And what you'll notice is that it is only ethernet connection. So that's those cables that you saw at the start. And the reason I say this is because you can have modem slash router combinations that you get from your internet service provider. You won't be able to replace those. And you can kind of tell if they have a different incoming connection than your basic Ethernet, Cat5, Cat6. Whether you put this into your home instead of the router or you're connecting it into the router, what you're going to do is take that cable you got in the box, plug it into the outgoing internet connection on your Nest Wi-Fi router, and then you're going to plug that into the outermost point of your network. Then you're going to plug in the AC adapter and wait about a minute for everything to kind of boot up and get ready. And then we're heading into what's called the Google Home application. And you'll need to download this on iOS or Android. You hit the plus up in the top left and now you're just going through a basic setup process. But what you're going to find in the list is your Nest Wi-Fi router. Now what it's actually doing is broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal to let the application find that router. So it's going to ask for permission to scan the QR code and you will have one on the bottom of your router. Once you've scanned that code, it's going to start making connections into the application and it's checking that you've plugged in your cables the right way. So if you haven't plugged in your cables to the right spot on your modem or your other router, well then right there you're gonna get stopped and you're gonna have to replace that. Now what you're doing is creating a Wi-Fi name. So this is the name that you would see whenever you're trying to connect to it and then you're creating a password. The next choice is whether you want to turn on Wi-Fi router and usage statistics. You don't have to do this. This is just something that Google uses to make their devices better. Turning on the Wi-Fi cloud services, this is something that I think will help you in general and definitely Google wants you to turn this on in order to make the experience much better. So once you've hit next, you're just creating the Wi-Fi network and now it's going to go through a set of steps to create that network then and connect into it to make sure everything is working and finalize the whole system. Now, the next question you get is whether you're setting up multiple devices. So if you have that Nest Wi-Fi point, what you're going to do is go plug that in wherever you'd like. And you're not going to go too far away. And you can test this a few times. I'll show you how to test your mesh connection. But place it, plug it in, and then you're going to go through the same setup process here or a very similar setup process inside of the application. So it's going to look for that other Nest Wi-Fi point. And honestly, I was standing next to that Nest Wi-Fi point or relatively close when I did this. Now, you also have the Google Assistant on board here. So you're going to go through the setup process for actually having a Google Assistant in your home. This means you'll get questions like whether you want to voice match or 
you want to connect things like music services and you just need to make those choices for yourself again this is just like setting up a google home or a google home mini product so now you can see my voice match is set up and personal results will help you with things like getting calendar events linking music services lets you listen to music on your nest wi-fi access point you can link the radio services for example, Sirius XM, and you can even make Google Duo voice calls through the Nest Wi-Fi point. So it's a fully functioning Google Home product. Now you go through a test of the Mesh Wi-Fi. This is the first test, and I'll show you how to do it again later, but you wanna see that great connection in there, and then you can decide to stay in the know, get updates, and you're likely to end up having to download an update for your Nest Wi-Fi system as well, but you're all done the basic setup process. Now that you have Nest Wi-Fi installed, I'm going to show you the interface. So I just tapped into the Wi-Fi button and right here you can see a number of different buttons and things we can tap on. So I tapped on the internet button and this gives you a history of the speed tests and you can also run a speed test to find out what you currently have for an internet connection. This helps you quickly diagnose if you're having issues with your ISP. So you get an answer back and then you can actually hit the test mesh button. But I'm going to show you that if you hit the points button, then this shows you your different points and the status of the connection. Plus you can retest that mesh connection if you've moved things. Now, you also have the network button which would take you back to that same interface and the devices list. Now, when you bring up the devices list, you can pause all your different devices and then you can see the kilobits per second or megabits per second running through the different devices and they will change over time. So you can tap on a device to get the details from it. The device details also give you the opportunity to change the device name. You can also within the device details see which point that this device is connected to it helps you kind of diagnose issues and whether it's on 2.4 gigahertz or it's on the 5 gigahertz signal which nest wi-fi chooses for you in general now if you hit the pause button what happens is the device goes to the bottom of your list and then you can unpause it later if you'd like you can also use that set priority device if you want to have a device be prioritized for a set period of time now you can also create create groups that allow you to schedule downtime or basically turn off the devices. So I created one for my kids and then this allows me to create a schedule from 12.01 to 5 a.m. where they are just paused. So in the evening, I definitely don't want them using any sort of network devices. And if you'd like, you can enable, disable those and you can change the days and the times and the different groups. So you have to create more groups if you want more control there. Now, another option is to create a guest network, which is very easy to access on smart displays from Google and from their partners with the Google Assistant on it. This allows you to have a whole separate Wi-Fi network that they can quickly connect to. You don't even have to give out the password with those smart displays and then you can share devices from your original Wi-Fi network over to the guest network. Things like printers are a great example. There's also a set of more advanced settings and features. So when you tap on that gear, you have all the different screens that you've already gone through. So the groups and the guest network and then you also have the WPA3 security setting, which you can turn on, but it isn't necessarily working with a lot of devices. You have the ability to prefer Stadia if you're using that gaming service, and then you have those privacy settings which allow you to turn on and off the cloud services from earlier in this setup video. On a much more complicated note, there is the advanced networking settings. You can adjust your DNS if you'd like to. In general, just using the automatic one is fine because it's using Google servers. You have the WAN settings, and in most cases, you're going to leave it on DHCP. Most ISPs want you to do that, but you can change it there if you need to. The LAN settings allow you to set the addresses basically inside of your network. You have UPnP, which Chromecasts do require, and I 
IPv6. I think you can turn those both on in general, although UPnP can be a security issue at this point. So you have to think about that before you do it. Now, DHCP reservations, if you want to reserve an IP address on your system, or if you want to port forward something, often this happens with games where you're trying to run a server or something like that some applications might require you to port forward as well so you could do that within port management and then you have network mode which you can see is automatically set on mine and in most cases it will be for you. At the bottom of the whole application you also have the ability to look at some licenses and you can factory reset the entire network but most often you might need to restart the network. That's about the only thing I've ever had to do with these Nest Wi-Fi devices once they're in place. You can quickly and efficiently restart the network. It takes about a minute and then you're good to go. There are some more advanced ways to get help with your Wi-Fi in your home, and that's why I created the video that is up on screen right now. This will help you take Nest Wi-Fi further, so go check that one out. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and of course, don't hate, automate.